In this movie, we take a look at, or I should say a fundamental look, at bones before we get into a sophisticated use of bones in the following sections and our projects at the end. When you think of bones, typically you're thinking of scary skeleton types of things. In the animation world, in the 3D world, bones just don't look like this. It's just a name given to the idea of a controlling structure for your animation, whether it's in 2D, or 3D, you'll see bones represented like the image over on the right hand side. And that has become a little bit of a standard in how bones are presented, whether it's in anime or other 3D applications. So becoming familiar with them in anime will also translate directly over to working with them in other animation applications if you go that way. Let's go ahead and hop on over to anime and see how they're used in that program. So here we are back in anime. When you launch the program, unless you've disabled this feature, you get the startup file which always shows you the same character whose name happens to be Windsor. This is a great way to kind of see how some of these files are put together. Bones are obvious right here in this character. We've got these green bones that look similar to the ones we just saw in the opening slide. But it's really just a stylized triangle that shows you one point connecting to another. Bones can be used to connect together images, that's photographic images, as well as drawn images, which gives you an incredible capability of creating unique looks inside your animations and then having them flex and move without a whole lot of muss and fuss that you would have if you didn't have some of the powerful boning features here. Let's go ahead and just look at the bones by themselves. And to do that, I'm down here in the lower right-hand corner in the Layers palette. I'm going to turn off on the bones layer, and we can tell it's a bones layer because it's got a little shape of a bone here. We'll be creating some new ones in this movie and in the next. So as I kind of skip around here just a little bit on the front, don't worry about it. We'll come back and start using these tools very specifically as we continue through this section. Inside this bones layer are all the parts that make up this character, Windsor. There's a little disclosure triangle right next to the eyes, and if I click on that, it will collapse this layer, so all we see is the bones layer. This is anime's way of telling itself that everything contained within this layer is going to have to obey the structure of the bones as it gets moved around. Now this startup file, the Windsor file, has already been animated for you, and I'm going to go ahead and click the play button right here. And we'll see our character making some motions, changing expressions, doing some things that we'll learn how to do a little bit more in the following movies here, and some following sections as well. I'll go ahead and stop that. Let's take a look at the bones themselves. And the way I will do that is by turning off the eyes on the bones layer. By doing the top level of this layer and clicking the eyes, all I'm left with are the bones themselves. And it's hidden all the render capabilities or all the I should say art files that render out. So you can see the bones very specifically when you're working. In fact, I'm going to move back a little bit by using the scroll wheel on my mouse so we can see the full scene right here. I'll go ahead and continue by pressing the play button here. And we can see the bones themselves aren't doing a whole lot. Many of the things we saw going on happen to do with facial expressions and things that people normally look at and gravitate towards when you see motion on human types of characters. So the bones animation here is fairly small, but it's also quite believable. There's some nice secondary motions, like when the arm drops, you see an arm move just a little bit, some believable extra motion. There's some great time-saving shortcuts to work with in anime, and we'll look at that as well in an upcoming movie. I'll go ahead and stop this. I'll turn on our character level here, and let's zoom back in. The Windsor character here is actually made up of some art files drawn on another program. And you can see that as the character moves, and the way I'm going to grab the little red triangle here in the timeline now, as I move back and forth, you'll see these shapes change. They'll bend themselves. And what bones do is allow you to bend the artwork, whether it's imported photos, or a photographic bitmap type program, say from Photoshop, or they also bend the artwork that you create in here, or import from Adobe Illustrator. Now some of the documentation that comes with anime, you know, is pretty good. They leave out some important things and I want to discuss and show what some of those important things are right here. I'm going to go ahead and create a new file by clicking Command N on the Macintosh and that will be Control N on the PC. It'll say, hey, you changed this file and I really don't want to save these changes. 
and we immediately get taken to our new file. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and we're going to make a diving board. Sounds simple enough. We have a layer showing down here, a single vector layer, which is a default layer when it opens up. But now I need to add a bones layer. So I will select the new layer icon, click it once, and I have the option from a pull down to choose many of the things we've lightly touched on in some earlier sections, and I'll pick the bone layer. Now it comes in as its own layer with the disclosure triangle already down so that you can see there are no contents in it. To get this layer one, this diving board layer into that, I need to click on the layer itself and drag it into the bones layer until it highlights completely red. Once it does that, I can release it with my mouse and you'll see that the bones layer is now in a subset. It's set in a little bit and if I click on the disclosure triangle, it will retract, click it again and it will disclose and we'll see we have that there. Well, let's go ahead and set up our bones right now and it's very, very easy to do. To set up bones, you cannot work on the art layer. Notice over here on the left hand side we have our special bone tool in the tools palette. It's highlighted now because I'm in the actual bones layer. If I select the art layer below it, we can see I've got a select bone tool but I can't add any bone tools. There's something else I want to call your attention to that as we begin working with the bones, the keyboard shortcuts for the bones tools are the same as the keyboard shortcuts for the draw tools. So not only do you have similar shortcuts, but you don't have to learn any new ones. And by that I mean when we add a bone, the keyboard shortcut for that is A. When you add a point, the keyboard shortcut for that in the draw tools is A. So some common sense type of correlations. Let's get started on adding bones to this in our next movie.